Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship for the 15th of August. Over the past three weeks, the lectionary has been inviting us to explore together the theme of Jesus being the bread of life. Three weeks ago, we looked at the miraculous moment that Jesus fed 5,000 people. Last week, we looked at the idea of, of people asking questions of what that miracle meant and how Jesus was able to do the things that he could do. And this week, Jesus answers those questions by saying that he himself is the life-giving bread on which we all depend for our eternal life. And he will actually say in our reading today, those famous words, I am the bread of life. So as we come into God's presence and as we look together at the theme of life-giving feast, Let's remind ourselves that Jesus is the bread on which we depend for our discipleship to flourish and to grow. Let's worship God. As we come to worship, are we hungry for God or satisfied by all the comforts of our life? As we hear God's word, do we want to be fed or have we had enough? Jesus invites us to feast with him. Let us come, for all is ready. Let us pray. Jesus, our life-giving bread, we have an appetite for you, and we come wanting to feed on your word. Jesus, you offer life to the world, eternal life raising us up on the last day. Keep us hungry for you with the anticipation of a feast of the finest food, food that brings life. Amen. We sing together. As we are gathered, Jesus is here, one with each other, Jesus is here. Let's sing together.
now we come to a time of prayer as we share our prayers of adoration, thanksgiving and confession. Let's pray together. O oh God, your word became flesh and lived among us. Thank you that you moved into our neighbourhood, that you are present with us right now, dwelling in our hearts and in our homes. Holy God, you are worthy to be praised. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Living bread, we adore you. Hospitable God, you always open your loving arms and welcome us. You have gone ahead of us into our communities and you are residing there, hoping that we might join you and invite others to join in too. Thank you that we are always welcome to sit and eat with you, to spend time intimately with you, to hang out together. Thank you that there is nothing too much for you. You are the ultimate sacrifice. You prayed the price so that we might live. We praise you, friend and saviour. Amen. And continuing in prayer, our prayer of confession. Lord, when we are not as hospitable as you were, forgive us, Lord, we pray. When we drain life out of people rather than be life-giving, forgive us, Lord, we pray. When we damage relationships rather than repair them, forgive us, Lord, we pray. When we seek self first, and don't share who we are. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Make us whole, Lord. Make us whole today. And an assurance of forgiveness. Lamb of God, you paid the ultimate price on the cross. Your body was broken and your blood was shed. And by your stripes, we are healed and forgiven. Amen. And we gather all our prayers together, praying the prayer that Jesus has taught all his disciples to pray, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we're going to listen to our reading from John's Gospel, John chapter 6 and verses 47 to 58. And I shall be reading this from the Message Translation of the Bible by, G by Eugene Peterson. So let's listen now to God's word. I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert and died. But now here is the bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die, will not die ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood self. 
At this, the Jews started fighting among themselves. How can this man serve up his flesh for a meal? But Jesus didn't give an inch. Only in so far as you eat and drink flesh and blood, the flesh and blood of the Son of Man, do you have life within you? The one who brings a hearty appetite to this eating and drinking has eternal life and will be fit and ready for the final day. My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way that the fully alive Father sent me here and I live because of him, so the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will always live. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I decided that for this service we would listen to two reflections on that reading. One that is taken from a book uh, written by Bob Hartman, who is a youth worker who, 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 who seeks to enable the Bible to be told to, um, um, to all ages of people. And this comes from his book, Telling the Bible, over a hundred stories to read out loud. And that looks at I am the bread. And then I decided that for the second part of the reflection, I would use the reflection that I found on the Roots on the Web website. Um, so, so both these, I think, enable us to reflect together on those very tricky words that we've just heard read from John's Gospel. So let's first of all listen to this reflection entitled, I am the bread. There was no bread on the mountain. On the mountain, there was no bread. Only groaning bellies and grumbling tummies. And one little lad who was willing to share his McDonald's fillet of fish meal. So Jesus took the bread rolls. Jesus took the fish. Here is bread, he said. He said, here is the bread. And he spoke a prayer and broke it. And every belly was full. There was no bread at the seaside. At the seaside there was no bread. Only moaning crowds and mumbling Pharisees who wanted to see an all singing, all dancing miracle show. Our fathers ate bread in the desert, they cried. What kind of sign will you shine from you? So Jesus looked at the crowd. Then Jesus shook the crowd. I am the bread, he said. He said, I am the bread. And if you swallow me and follow me, then you will live forever. There was no bread on the road to Emmaus. On the road, there was no bread. Just a long, sad walk and a stranger who talked as if he knew nothing of the death of their friend. So when Cleopas and his friend arrived at last at their home, they urged the stranger to stop and have some tea. The stranger broke the bread and he spoke a prayer as well. Thanks for the bread, the stranger said. The stranger said, thanks for the bread. Their eyes were opened. They knew who he was. And like a ghost or a phantom or an English summer sun, he disappeared at once from their sight. So here we are, traipsing up life's mountain. Here we are, simply sailing life's sea. 
here we are in the middle of life's journey, a long, long way from home. Walking and talking, groaning and moaning, grumbling and mumbling and fumbling together. For what? A bit of sunshine? A McDonald's happy meal? An all singing, all dancing miracle show? Or a life that's worth living? Maybe worth living forever? I am the bread says Jesus. He says, I am the bread. Walk with me, talk with me, swallow me, follow me. Come and taste and live. I want us to use our imaginations this morning. And I want us to imagine that we're entering a church for the first time. I know many of us have attended church for many, many years. But on this occasion, I want you to imagine that you are entering a church for the first time in the whole of your life. And you've just heard those words read from John's Gospel. Those words of Jesus being read out, declaring that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. I want you to think about whether or not you would ever return to church again. Having heard those words, would there be any chance of you returning next week to church? I think it's highly unlikely because those words are disturbing words. Those words make us stop and think and challenge us and make us think to ourselves, that's pretty disgusting, isn't it? Now, these words might have been a little easier to grasp for Jesus's audience on the hillside in Galilee, in an age and a context so different from our own. His contemporaries were familiar with the idea of sacrifice and the spilling of blood, something that was as much about shared meals as about tradition and symbolism. But Jesus' invitation to eat my flesh would have been a shock even for them. They were used to the idea of going up to the temple and making sacrifices of of perhaps lambs at the Passover or, or two turtle doves at the birth of a child. But they would have been shocked for a teacher that they'd been following to say, I am the true sacrifice. I am the one who you need to eat the flesh and drink the blood of in order to receive eternal life. They would have been familiar with the idea that sacrifice atones for sin. But they would not have expected it to have come from the one that they believed to be the anointed one from God who was going to set them free. Within our own churches, our own understanding of what happens when we celebrate Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper may be something that we take for granted. But it could seem as alarming to newcomers as Jesus' first invitation was. It is, of course, meant as a way of expressing or allowing Jesus to be as close to us as food is, to achieve a complete oneness with us. And the purpose of this all-consuming relationship is for our benefit, to feed us with all that is essential for our lives as disciples. 
just as Paul wrote to the Ephesians, that they are not to be filled with wine, but with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus wants us to rely not on physical food alone, but to receive the nourishment of his life, his word. We can all appreciate that some foods are more appetising than others, and we each have our own preferences. Have you ever felt bored with food and wished for a more varied diet, something new and tasty perhaps? The same will be true of our appetite for the word of God, both in the way that we worship together and in our private devotions. In Jesus' time, the faith of the Jews relied heavily on tradition and perhaps had become a bit dull and a bit tasteless. He offered them something new, something exotic and perhaps even risky. I wonder, how is our appetite when we come into God's presence and worship? each week. I wonder if we are excited and full of anticipation that Jesus will feed us with something new this week. Or whether we've just got overused to the same familiar diet. Is our spiritual diet balanced and well nourished? Are we allowing God's word to seep within us? Do we really enjoy our meal of worship enough to invite others to the feast? I think that's our challenge this morning as we end this time of reflection. Are we truly celebrating who Jesus is in our lives? Are we feeding on the word that he gives to us? Are we allowing him to minister to us in all our need? And as we seek to walk the way of Jesus, are we so excited by what we hear that we're willing to invite others to join in this journey that leads to eternal life too? Amen. In response to what we've heard, we're going to pray together. So let's pray. Lord, we come to you asking you to fill us and feed us today. There are so many ways in which we are empty and need your nourishment. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. We pray for those who are hungry, those experiencing physical hunger in parts of the world where there is not enough food, for those on the brink of starvation. Particularly, we pray for places which come up in the news and then get forgotten, such as the Yemen. We pray for those who have enough to feed their families until the rains fail and the crops die. We pray for all organisations seeking to give people the bread they need. We pray for people in refugee camps or homeless on our own streets. We thank you for those who feed them maybe in soup kitchens or hostels. We bring to mind our local food banks and ask you to give courage to those who need them, but feel ashamed to ask for help. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. Lord Jesus, we know that your heart of compassion aches for the pain of the world. So we pray for all those 
who need the bread of comfort in their lives. We think of those who have heard who we have heard about on the news who have faced trouble and pain this week. Particularly the people of Greece as the wildfires have spread and for the people of Afghanistan. We pray for those in our own community who are suffering from physical or mental illness. We ask for your comfort for those who have other difficulties, victims of abuse, those who live in unhappy homes, those who are confused and don't know where to turn. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around all those who mourn. And in the stillness, we bring our own troubles, worries and sorrows to you, knowing that you care about everything that bothers us, however trivial it might seem. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. We bring to mind those who are spiritually hungry, those who are searching for something more beyond themselves, but who have not yet found you. Give us the wisdom and the sensitivity to guide people to you. We pray for the young people of our land, so many of whom have never had the opportunity to meet Jesus or anyone who loves him. We pray for all those who received exam results this week. We pray for your guidance as they seek where to go next with either their education or into the workplace. Give courage to Christians in schools, colleges, universities and workplaces, that they may be a shining witness to their friends and colleagues. Pray for those Christians who are persecuted for their faith, yet still remain constant, trusting that you will supply their needs. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. Lord, we thank you for this church community. We thank you for the opportunities we have to come here each week and be fed by your word and our worship. We pray for our leaders. In the quiet, we pray for those sitting near us. We remember any of our community who are currently not able to come to church in person asking that they will still feel that they belong and that we will do all we can to keep them involved. We pray that we will always make visitors to our church feel welcome, our priority being to help everyone who comes here to meet with you. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. Finally, Lord, in the stillness, we bring our own personal needs to you. Help us to rejoice that you care about every detail of our lives, even the ones we think you don't notice. We ask that you will give us food for our journeys this week, we name in the silence places or situations that might be hard for us. Nourish us with your presence in every situation we find ourselves, particularly those unexpected moments where we need extra help. Help us to go out from here, knowing that we have met with you and have been fed by you this morning. Jesus, bread of life. Feed us and nourish us with yourself. Breathe your life 
into our lives. Fill us with your spirit that we may overflow with you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We close our worship as we sing together. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us. Mary's son. Pray for God's blessing. After being fed by you, Jesus, the living bread, send us out to feed others. Now that we are filled with your Holy Spirit, guide our hands as we offer your life to others. Now that we have the promise of eternal life with you, Lord God, Give us your love to share with the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and with all who we love this day and forever. Amen.